Hey everybody, it's Hardy with Electronic Test Equipment. Today we are looking at a Fluke 179 True RMS Multimeter. But this one has faded LCD segments. So I'm going to show you step by step how to break it down. And we are going to clean the old pink elastomeric connectors that are inside and see what kind of an impact that has on the display. I'm pretty sure it will restore the display. So if you're looking for a quick fix, this quick fix may last a month. It may last a year, but eventually you'll run into the same problem over time. And when you get to the point where you no longer wish to clean the elastomeric connectors, then the next way to fix it would be to replace the elastomeric connectors with the new gray style. And that would be these. At any rate, this is how to clean it as a solution to bringing back your LCD on your Fluke 170 multimeters. One, this will work on the Fluke 175, the Fluke 177, and of course this one, the Fluke 179 True RMS Multimeter. Let's take a look. Okay, so step number one to breaking down the Fluke 179 is we want to turn everything off and disconnect all test leads. So we're going to turn it in the off position, make sure it's off. And if there are any test leads that you're working with, just disconnect everything. Now we're going to turn it over and we're going to remove the four screws on the back. By the way, if you are just changing the nine volt battery, then all you would need to do is remove these two screws here and then lift up on this door. So let me show you with the demonstration. So we're going to remove these two screws here. And when we lift up, there's a lip here so we can kind of stick our thumb under there. Now we can lift this up and out and expose the nine volt battery. If all you're doing is replacing the battery, your job is done. This video is we're going to break down the whole thing. So we're going to continue and we're going to remove these two screws on the top. So that's four screws total. Since we've got this battery compartment open with the 9 volt battery, let's disconnect it. So now we've disconnected all the power to the unit. And let's open it up. We're just going to pry it apart. Pops right out. So here's the top case, here's the middle. Now I should mention that the tools you're going to need are the Phillips screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. Uh, you're going to need a smaller Phillips as well. And I will show you why when we get to that point. So now that we've got the unit open, we can remove this one. Let's see uh, the buttons, the button pad. So we want to remove the main PCB, but there's something else holding it in. So if you notice, you try to take it out, it's not moving. Don't ever force anything. If you're ever looking at uh, investigating a piece of equipment, just give it a little test, see what's going on. and. Uh, if it's not easily coming out right away, then you know, okay, there's something else holding this in. And in this case, there's a screw under the milliamp fuse. So I'm just gonna pry it open with a little flathead screwdriver. 
and we're going to open it up. And you see this screw right here that's holding down the main PCB. Let's unscrew that and that should give us the freedom to remove the main PCB. I'm going to put the screw over to the side here. And now let's see what happens when we lift up. Oh yeah, see, just there's a, you, you can tell that it's ready to come out. There's just nothing holding it down. It's very easy. So I'm lifting it up by this plastic here, this plastic shield, but you still want to be careful. You don't want to break anything. Probably the easiest way to do it is to lift it by the uh, LCD, the display side, and just Try it out easily and gently because you don't want to put too much force or pressure on these plastic posts right here that fit through these holes. So, and there you have it. We have free and easy access to the back of the main PCB and we want to loosen these four screws here so that it will make removing this LCD face mask or faceplate all that much easier. So we want to loosen these four screws on the back. We don't want to remove them. We just want to loosen them up. So let's do that now. It's okay to go uh, as far as you can without removing them completely. You might find if you try to do just a little bit or go halfway, you might have to revisit it. Uh, you know, just to ensure there's plenty of slack and no tension. You know, just give them all a good number of turns uh, without removing them all the way. So as you can see, I gave them all a good number of turns, but not enough to remove them completely. You can see here, uh, it's enough to create a lot of slack and play. Because again, this LCD face mask holds the LCD in place and the LCD is glass. And because there's some pressure on there, basically what we're doing is we're just allowing a lot of play so that there's no pressure, there's no tension on the glass LCD itself. And now we can proceed to remove this LCD face mask uh, without it being under any kind of pressure. Um, we're going to go ahead and follow the proper procedure. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver and we are going to... Uh, Make sure that you hold the LCD in place so that it doesn't fall out. But we're going to go ahead and use this uh, flathead to kind of pry up underneath. Provide a little bit of pressure and you, you heard it snap. Let's do that again. I'm going to snap it back into place and I'm going to do it again. I'll be quiet so we can hear it unsnap. So it's in place and we're going to pry it up. That's all it takes. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. You want to be very careful because we're dealing with plastic here. This is one side. Let's do the other side now. So now this LCD face mask is, is removed. I'm kind of holding the LCD in place with my finger. We can see these four notches here that the LCD face mask snaps over. So all we're doing is we're just prying it up just enough to get it over these, uh, I guess, snap-on points. Okay, so now that this is done, we're going to remove this loose LCD mask that has uh, it basically keeps the LCD in place and as you can see here 
we've got the old pink elastomeric connectors. So I'm going to remove the glass LCD. And don't be alarmed if the elastomers stick to the LCD when you remove it. It's perfectly normal. Looks like this LCD has a little chip in there. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it is glass. Always be careful. And so now we've got these two elastomer connectors that are ready to come out. So I'm going to take these out. and clean them. Again, you can use a uh, 70 proof alcohol from the store. I just have these little pads. And we're just gonna clean both sides of each elastomeric connector. If you're using alcohol from a bottle from the store, you can use cotton swabs. You can use, you can probably use any kind of napkin or sturdy paper towel or tissue. Just whatever you have available. So now that we've cleaned to both of these, we're going to reinsert them. Hang on there. So at any rate, we're going to put the LCD back on and we're going to make sure that it's properly lined up and in there inside this holding space. And now, so the reason for loosening this up on the back, those four screws is because when we place this on, uh, you don't want to make the mistake of possibly having the glass not aligned properly and then you're trying to put this one back on and, and it ends up putting too much pressure or catching the glass on the edge. I think that's what I did on the edge here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to slide this. Let's make sure we have some of that slack in there so there's no pressure on the glass and we're just going to pop this face mask back on here. We're going to snap the bottom and snap the top and there we go. Snap the bottom first and then snap the top. So now we're going to go ahead and tighten up these four screws on the back. As we proceed to reassemble this unit, put it all back together and hopefully there will be zero faded segments. So it's good to use a flat surface, sturdy workbench or table as you're doing these projects. So nice and snug, I'm not going to overdo it, just snug. I want to make sure that there's no additional play and that these Elastomer connectors are nice and snug inside, making a solid contact between the glass and the main PCB. You can actually feel these screws go all the way down to the bottom to where the, you, you can tell where it kind of stops. But it's snug all the way down. Don't overdo it. Just make sure there's no gaps between this white bracket and the main PCB on either side. It needs to be nice and snug. You see it from all angles here. It looks good. So now we're ready to put it all back together. The bottom case. Again, here's the bottom case. We want to make sure that the this wafer is in place and intact. So I'm going to place it back in there. It's got this little notch along with these two springs 
connector connecting points that connect to the back of the PCB I'm just using this kind of position it back over the notch so that it's in there properly and oh by the way this this screw that holds the main PCB down to the bottom case it's also grounding it out that's that's here this grounding uh, strip and here's something else I don't know if I mentioned it or not this button here this is the calibration button it this this comes out like so if you look on the back of the unit and you read on here it says cal point and so if you were going to calibrate this you would insert a small needle into this cow point you don't want it to be too small or too sharp because all you want to do is you want to depress this you're you're depressing this button here from the back side and then this is the point that that connects to the main PCB and enables the cow mode so you want to make sure that this is in place again this only goes in one way because it has these grooves here on the back case and this it's made out of rubber or some kind of plastic rubberized material and you can see the grooves on here so it just pops right in on over the grooves to the back case and of course make sure the beeper wafer button is in place correctly with the notch. So now we're going to insert the main PCB. Make sure we've tightened these four screws snug so that there's no play. Make sure everything's nice and tight, but snug. Don't overdo it. And we're going to pop this one back in. And now we are going to reinsert this ground screw that belongs under the milliamp fuse. So we're going to insert this, ground everything up. Nice and secure. We're going to reinsert the milliamp fuse, followed by the button assembly here. Gotta have that, and the top case. And so, placing everything together, we're just starting from the bottom, working our way to the top, and we're just gonna put some pressure on the top and listen for that snap. Good to go. So again, before installing the rest of the screws to seal the deal, I'm going to reinsert this nine volt battery and we are going to power it on to see what we're looking at. Make sure everything looks good. So here's the moment of truth. We've got the power source in, everything's back together. Let's turn it on and see what we have. Nice, clear, LCD with no faded segments. and everything is as it should be. So I hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for checking it out. I am Hardy with Electronic Test Equipment and I will catch you all on the next video. Take care everybody.